Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Options Mentor. And there it is. We finally had the all-time high we've been talking about the market probing for. It got there on Friday. Of course, there's a mixture of people hoping for more, some people thinking, okay, now what happens? Not sure what to do next. And uh, I read a, one interesting article where an analyst, at least he admitted it, said the market will be spending the next three months trying to justify this rally. Okay, so really it's ran up, nothing there, nothing behind it, but blue sky, as the saying goes. But uh, so we'll find out and we'll see if we can go higher. Um, well, let's take a look at something here. I wanted to um, talk about this real quick, and that is that the VIX has really remained stubbornly high. I'm going to bring it up here. Oops, I hit the wrong button. But so, I mean, stubbornly low, no matter what happens in the market, goes down, the VIX has been staying the same. Goes up, VIX has been staying the same. Uh, very little change in it, even with huge rallies or really pretty good 40, 50 point pullbacks. It, the, the, the tension in the market kind of is one thing that's really been remaining uh, in stasis, right? Not really moving around a lot. So we got a fairly low volatility environment. We got a market that hit all time highs on hopes. And uh, we'll see what happens from there. The techs are back in charge. Apple got a couple upgrades, which drove a lot of this. Uh, this isn't anything the Fed said this time. I'm sure they'll be looking for that. There is this coming Friday, the PCE number. That's an inflation number that the Fed likes to look at. So that's something that we need to pay attention to. Um, but I had I had an idea here today for this week. And uh, we'll stay with the long Vega theme. I think you have to with the volatility down here. Uh, just looking for that point when volatility finally does kick its kick itself up a little bit. And that is what we're talking about here is a put diagonal, uh, a, a long put diagonal, meaning that the long is deeper in the money. In this case, I bought the 4855 put, sold the 4850 put. The idea here is uh, it's sort of like what we call it the calendar sister, right? Because it's not quite like a calendar. If this was a calendar, let's say we're both at 50, you would have fairly equal damage on both sides if it gets near the edges. Uh, but if you do the diagonal just five points wide, I know a lot of times I've shown them 10 points. And I guess if you're really, really thinking of pullbacks coming, you could try that. But I like this five point wide because uh, all it does really is flatten you out to the downside. If the market says, hey, wait a minute, this was too much, you're not going to be in panic mode because you've ran out of room down here and, and start taking on heat. I mean, you could be down here, you could always add a complex, adjust your trade, give it more room, or maybe even take the trade off at a small profit and then just put on a new one. Either of those ideas would be fine. Uh, and that's if it moves down, if it stays the same, hey, this is going to act like a counter. If it tries to probe a little higher, maybe go to 50, we don't mind. Yeah, would you be down short term a few bucks? Maybe so. But if you look at this trade by Friday, you could easily be up 10% by this coming Friday and just get out of it. In fact, that's what I'm looking to do, if possible, is be out of this trade by Friday. And this is a trade I'd look to put on tomorrow as long as the market hasn't you know, already you know, gapped down 80 points or something, kind of ruined the idea, wouldn't it? Uh, but if we're, we open up higher, hey, if the market opened up 80 points higher or something tomorrow, I'd like this trade even more. So if we open up higher, that's terrific. Uh, and then at some point, maybe later in this session, last couple, three hours, look to enter something like this. Maybe you're short 15, 20 points above the money or so. We ended the day at 48, 39 on Friday, and I just modeled this with 50, which anywhere in there, anywhere from 10, 15 points is probably best. Above the money is where your short is. And then you buy your long put five points higher. Uh, and I would do this. Uh, selling the February 2nd and buying the February 5th. I like to go three days wide on these. It, you know, it lessens your Vega exposure. We'll go ahead and look at a four day. Now you could go four days wide if you like. It's not quite as peaceful on the downside. You can see you're down a little bit down here. We were up, excuse me. 
And um, so I don't know. I, I think I think I would rather be three days on this. And uh, this is a trade I think has an excellent chance of working one way or another. Not something you put on first thing in the morning. Let it let the market work its way out. Hopefully the market goes up. We should make this trade look even better. And then put this thing on uh, and uh, do it for a week from Friday. That keeps the trade overall your p a little flatter in the near term. So if it does kind of go, if it goes against you, you're not down as much money. You know, if it runs up to 4880, 4890, you could always add a complex or you could take the trade off at a smaller loss, whichever you choose. Uh, but that's going to be a little bit of a lift. I wouldn't be surprised if we cap 48.50 to 60. I don't think we'll go a whole lot higher than that tomorrow, but we'll find out, won't we? And then hopefully if we do, I'll put this on later and it'll be even less likely because the closer, we've went to all time highs now, folks. The closer uh, and then the further up we go from here, the harder it's going to be for the market to sustain that, right? So I think something like this is going to be an excellent trade this week. And uh, take a look at it, see what you think. By the way, you could do it in SPY. Uh, you probably have, you'd have to use one point. You could say, well, let's go over here and look at SPY. Sometimes I like to mention it just so people who want to do SPY uh, know how they could do. So SPY's trading at 482.64. So with something like this, you might go up to sell the 485 and buy the 486 type of thing. It wouldn't be a quite lined up like five point wide uh, like it is in the SPX, uh, but it is uh, doable in the SPY if you want to do something really small. Although if you look at this trade, it isn't super expensive as it is about 400 bucks at current prices. But anyway, look to put this on later in the session if it appeals to you and makes sense to you. And uh, maybe sell that short 10, 15 points above where we're trading at the time. Buy the long five points higher for next week, the second, buying the fifth. And uh, take it from there. As always, I appreciate everyone subscribing to my channel, leaving the comments, liking the videos. Please keep it up. It's really appreciated. Have a great week. I hope you're doing better than we are. We are in some frigid temperatures here in eastern Missouri. Hopefully, you've got some warmer temps wherever you are. But have a good one. Hopefully, your trading successes will keep you warm. I'll talk to you next week. Have a good one. Bye-bye.